In this video series, we're going to focus on creating a candlestick chart. And right now what we're going to do here is just having a very basic chart here, which would eventually become our candlestick. And we're going to work on this here, which is a, basically a floating bar chart. Let's start to work on the foundation. So let's start to look how to create the custom candlestick chart in ChartJS. And this is part one. So what we need is we're going to get first our default code. And I want to be here very clear. I'm not going to use the ChartJS financial plugin. Normally a plugin would be fine. But in the latest update, which is ChartJS 3.8, somehow that update has counteracted with the plugin or the financial chart plugin and it doesn't work anymore so that's why we're going to create our own version that will be suitable within chart.js so go to this site here chart.js3.com getting started this specific link here which you can find as well in the description box once you're on here we're going to copy this uh, default code here oh uh, make sure we copy that all together, all right, copy. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here. So I'm going to make this one here, put that in there. We're going to cut out this title and put the title in here. Save this, refresh, and now we have a basic bar chart. If you really look carefully, what is a candlestick chart? Basically, it is a floating bar chart with those lines, what we call the wick or the candle wick, which is the, basically the wire or the rope of the candle at the top and at the bottom or handles it could be one or the other so we're going to use this now we're going to create this but what i want to do first then is to convert this into a floating bar chart i'm going to use many tricks and some tricks i try to copy as much as possible the charges plugin or the candlestick plugin but not everything works but i hope in the near future as the video series progresses i will find solutions for that However, we're going to work with what we have right now. So what I'm going to do here is quite simple. Uh, we're going to put in this. I'm going to change this here. And I'm going to put in here brackets. And then I'm going to say here, oh sorry, these are curly braces. And then what I'm going to do here in the curly braces, the first one would be the X value, which would be basically the date itself. So to make it simple, I'm going to create here date objects, a new date. And then in here, we're going to put in the current date, which is uh june 1 and then what i want to do is i want to set the hours at midnight the reason why is if i only do this and of course not like that but only putting this here what will happen is it will get my gmt time or the greenwich mean uh, mean time and i don't want that so what i'm going to do here is i want to put here the set hours all on zero because i am in a different time zone and it will then count count that as well so i'm going to put it all on zero so it will be always at midnight of that particular day so once we have that we have the first one here make sure we have a comma here next one is we're going to have here the open value so in the open value i'm going to put in 125 and then we have here the high value which would which is just all quite standard items i'm going to just put in some values in here this is 135 and then we have the low value which is let's say one flat basically and then we have here closing which would be 1.10 all right so we have this here now and we can duplicate this to put multiple items in here and i realized that we should put in here a bracket as well so my bad make sure you have a bracket and then you have these curly braces here so if i do this let's say I'm going to put in here five more items so uh, let's put those in there, there, and then final here, comma, and the last one here. There we are. So what I want to do here, this will be five, four, and then later on, we probably have to extend this if I want to put in here like a moving average. So we have all of these here. What I want to do just for the sake of it, we have this here, and I realized I forgot one, and this is very important. I cannot do without this. So we're going to just put this in one here. That's the S. And this would be basically the, the values itself. I, I don't know why I'm calling it S. You could call it anything else. But basically, this is basically the series of the open and closing value. Because this here will be the part that the bar will be. So I'm going to say here, we're going to grab here the open value, comma, closing value, which is one dot that. All right. So make sure you have this as well. For this here, same story, except then, of course, different values. So I'm going to do, just put that in here 
and just add them all in there. There we are. And then what I want to do here is let's make this one. All right. So we have here, we close here at 110. So we're going to open at 110. And uh, let's say here our low, and then we're going to close here at 120, for example. So this is what 110, and this will be 120. And then here we open here at 120, and we go here to 150 as high, and maybe here low would be also 120, and close is 150. So we have a good day here. So put in here these numbers, and of course you can just do your own numbers here. I'm just going to uh, just give it a basic amount of details here. All right, so high here would be, well, let's say here 180. Then we have here, this is 120, that's the low, and then we close at 140. So here 150 and at 140. Final one here, we are at 140, and then we have the high would be maybe, let's say $2 flat, and then we have here $1.30. And then our closing would be 175. So here, open at 140 and then closing at 175. So if I save this now, refresh, nothing happens here. And let me just extend the chart size. So I'm going to convert this, say here 80%. Save, refresh, all right. So why nothing happens right now? Because it doesn't understand here what we're doing. Basically what we're doing here is we create a data structure. And this data structure, we will have to eventually specify the item itself. So let's go scroll down here, go down in here, and then we're going to put in here the data structure. So what I want to say here is the index, uh, oh sorry, not the index axis. Here I need here a specific term. Let me just check quickly. So what we're going to put in here is parsing, and then here we're going to specify. What I want to specify is basically this. I want to make sure that the chart is able to read these here. And this is based on the y-axis because these are the values for the bars going up and down. So we're going to say here, the y-axis uh, y -axis ID and the ID will be equal to S. All right, so we have this, save, refresh. All right, so let's see here what's going on. Unexpected identify 102. So let's look at here 102. I forgot to put a comma here. Make sure you have these commas. So save, refresh. All right, so then we have here 130. Let's see as that this one, of course, another comma. Let's save that, refresh. All right, so now we have this. It still doesn't work here correctly. And the reason why is probably we need to have still the uh, x indexes, for, uh, the x axis ID, sorry. And this should be our x here. We can just put that here. Let's see if this works. All right, interesting. So it gives us still an error. So let's look at what is going on here. So after looking, sorry about it, it should not be the x axis ID. I don't know how I uh, con confuse this. This is basically for creating a scale. It should be the x axis key indicating which item or key we're going to use as a value. So if I refresh this, there we are. So this works here, but as you can see here right now, it's still slightly confused because of this one here. We could basically remove the labels here, then it will work, but we might get another error. All right, so what is happening here? Let me just be very clear here. We didn't specify the scale type here. So what I'm going to do here now is we're going to uh, use the date and time uh, adapter. So go here to chartjs.org, go to ecosystem, Scroll down here, and then we're going to search for the adapters. And we're going to use the date FNS adapter. Click on this. And uh, there, by the way, just be quick here. There are three options here. Don't use this. This has been deprecated since 2020, so ignore that one. These two are your options. I like this one because it only requires one file, although it's slightly harder to use. This one is easier to use, but requires two JavaScript files. But for me, since I will not use any of their features, I'll just only use the JavaScript file, I'm going to use the date FNS. So once I scroll down here, get this one here, which is the chart.js date FNS bundle. So copy that. Then we're going to say here, make sure you load it after the chart.js library. We're going to save that, refresh. All right. Doesn't work yet because we need to indicate now that the X scale has been adjusted. So we're going to say X scale. We're going to say here, um, 
type and the type here will be time series not time this is very important because you might say well what's the difference between time series and time if you do time everything will be calculated and it will be in time proportion meaning if you have for example two hours it requires two width compared to one hour or let's say we have one day and you have another one is like two days difference it will make space for two days which is fine but there's an issue because if you're going to make a chart and a normal stock chart doesn't cal calculate the weekends because it's uh, uh, weekends they are close so time series will make everything equal distant meaning equally distant or equal distant or equidistant that's the term but it's derived from the word equal distant so it will always have the same distant and will remove basically the weekends for us because of that so once we have that we can say here now the time object and i'm going to say here the unit i'm going to specify i want it per day save refresh all right so we get this here 104 41 so of course no comma say there we are so now we have this one here we have basically our very very basic item here nothing yet here uh let's let's do a few basic items and then we can wrap it up and then we're going to continue on in the next video so what i'm going to do is i want these lines here so i'm going to say here border skip i'm going to say here uh true oh sorry it's false we're going to remove the border skip because it will then show this all right so now we have this here and i guess this for now is perfect you might say well the tooltip everything is absolutely not consistent that is correct we're going to work on that so don't worry about that so next video i'm going to give it a color because we need to make sure that the uh, candlestick chart would have proper colors if it goes up it should be green if it goes down it should be red next video we're going to cover that